Greetings folks, this video is going to be a build overview of this uh, U-Glider inspired three channel thermal glider, I haven't got a name for it yet, I uh, have to think of something clever to call it. It started as uh, an investigation into building wings using 3mm Depron, I've used 6mm Depron very well over the last few years. Uh, using the arm and wing style of building. If you haven't heard of the arm and wing, just search for it. This is how you spell arm and wing. There is plenty of information about, out there about um, how to build really nice wings using folded foam. Pioneered by Ed O'Byrne from Experimental Airlines. So this has turned out to be one of my most successful builds, I think. It just works so well as a light wind thermal glider or extreme slow flyer or even a slope saw if you want to. Only three channels so uh, no servos in the wing, no ailerons, just uh, rudder, elevator and throttle. The rudder and elevator are spring pull operated which means they have a little torsion spring in the hinge there uh, and we've got a, a pull line going up to the servo up in the fuselage up here. That means you don't have to run push rods or wires down to the tail, it saves a lot of weight, keeps the overall weight a lot lighter. Now how did I come up with the dimensions? My 3mm Depron sheets are 70cm by 1m, they come from Trade Warehouse online and I, I buy it in bulk so it's uh, cost effective. You could nowadays use the Hobby King Aero Modelling Foam in 70 by 50 millimeter sheets. Do they come in? They come in 70 by a meter as well. I think uh, it's actually a lot cheaper than this stuff. Uh, probably not quite as good quality, but it will work perfectly anyway. So this centre section, 70 centimeters, and the two uh, upturned wing tips are just a 70 centimeter section cut in half and glued on, 35 centimeters. So total wing span is 1.4 meters or 140 centimeters. I wanted to have a, a one in ten aspect ratio, which is a good wing aspect ratio for a glider. 140 centimetres wingspan, 14 centimetres cord, and the cord thickness, I experimented with a couple of different designs. The first one I tried was a three millimetre former. That was quite good, uh, but it did tend to stall a little bit, so I've tried a thicker six millimetre former, which brings it up to about a nine or 10% airfoil section which is also a, a nice sort of slippery glider airfoil. I've shown the basics of, of making these wings in previous videos and I'll put links in the description so you can go and have a look at them. Now it's a three channel plane, doesn't have ailerons so it needs some dihedral or polyhedral to assist with turning. The rudder sort of kicks the tail around then the turned up part of the wing helps bank it through the turn. How much do you put in? Well uh, it's just guess really. Uh, I've made planes before and I sort of know roughly what looks right for a three channel dihedral. Uh, so what I did was I lay the wing flat on the bench and all I did was sort of shape this joint here so that it, it butted up nicely and hot glued it together and that's all. There's no, there's no sort of carbon spar going through there. And I just glued it in position so that this tip was up 90 millimetres. Now why didn't I join it in the middle? Because if I joined it in the middle and had dihedral, I would have to create a dihedral join in there with the spar, uh, otherwise the wing wouldn't be strong enough. So this is just a much easier way because there's less wing loading on this joint here, or less, less loading on this joint here, uh, the glue will hold it by itself. I have a 6mm by 1mm spar, edge on carbon fibre strip spar, glued in to the back of the former there, and that gives it plenty of stiffness, plenty of strength to uh, support the wing, especially with a really light wing loading. The fuselage is just designed around the battery, uh, fitting the battery in there. Let's get a battery. And I'm using a 950 milli milliamp hour Nanotech 2S. So I just sized up the, the tube, the foam tube that forms the fuselage so the battery would fit in there. There'd be enough room for a receiver and the little ESC using a little Hobby King, what is it? Oh, I don't know what it is actually. But a, a little 12 amp Hobby King plush ESC would do. Or In my next version I'll actually allow a little bit more space so that I can put a, a variometer in there as well. It's just a little bit too tight to fit all that extra stuff in so maybe just a little bit more space here. 
the motor, this is just the front of a U-glider. I've got a spare U-glider uh, because I, the hard part is finding a small folding prop like that. I think that's uh, 5 by 3 or 5 by 4 or something like that. And they're just not readily available. Any sort of small quad motor would do fine. Uh, it, the all-up weight is only 300 grams, so uh, uh, you don't need much thrust at all. In the next version, I'll find a motor and a folding prop uh, that don't have to come from the U-glider, so that will go back on my spare U-glider. Uh, I've actually ordered a small folding prop from uh, Banggood, so when that arrives, I'll find a little motor for it and we'll make another version with a motor and prop that you can buy. The servos lie flat in the side on the ground there. It's probably not the most aerodynamic. You could mount the servos internally and run the pull lines down the tube. That would be a, a more aerodynamic way to do it, but for uh, the prototype and ease of building, these are Kevlar kite lines, but any sort of thin you know, Dacron line or something like that would do. Running through little tubes there that are just taped on and back to ID card plastic control horns there. Rudder and elevator are just three millimeter Depron uh, covered with iron-on laminate, or you could cover it with packing tape. It's fairly delicate. They're probably I found that the three millimeter Depron tail uh, vertical stabilizer wasn't really good enough for the sloper. I had to change that to balsa, but this is fine for a uh, thermal glider that's uh, nice, gentle flying. Get the flat pieces of three millimeter Depron iron on the laminate both sides all the way around and then apart from the bit where you're going to apply the glue and then I've got a six millimeter Depron pedestal there I uh, just shaped it to fit onto the carbon fiber spar and glued it on with hot glue and the tail the vertical stabilizer is um, just glued onto the spar with hot glue and, and it has sort of uh, a bracing of three millimeter Depron either side as well and then it's just taped over with some nice strong scotch tough tape. Now the torsion spring, uh, I'll link to a video that I've shown how to make up a torsion spring, that's quite easy. The tricky part is finding the right wire to use and uh, I think I'm using 0.3 millimeter stainless steel wire which or, or uh, spring wire uh, that came as the push rods for the uh, U-glider actually. The, three inches sort of across that way so the longer you make that center section of the spring the, the sort of the, the gentler the spring action is and you do have to be careful not to make the springs too strong otherwise it'll warp the control surfaces and they're just protected with a bit of CA glue inside and tape on the top and bottom as well just to stop it from sort of poking through the foam. Now the length of the tail boom uh, for these things I use a carbon fibre arrow shaft and they are 32 and a quarter inches long or 82 centimetres. Um, now in Australia these are reasonably expensive, uh, they're 10 dollars each or something, but, but you can buy them in the US from a kite shop called Kites and Fun Things for $2 US each. Uh, so it's worth me buying a whole stack of them and, and spending the $40, $50 freight to get them to Australia. Um, these things are like gold, they sort of work perfectly for wing spars and, and tail booms for lightweight gliders as well. Again, this the link for this is in the materials link in my description as well. How did I come up with the length? Well, I really, because I, these are like gold for me, they're hard to get my hands on. I don't want to cut them, I want to use them, reuse them all the time. So I just um, thought, well, if that's going to be a good length without cutting it that's fine and I matched it up against the U-glider and that's a, roughly the same size tail boom as well so uh, that decided my tail boom length basically. Wings just held on by rubber bands, two lightweight rubber bands and little carbon fibre sort of tie down posts there just glued through the uh, foam and reinforced with ID card plastic like I do on all of my tie down wing joins. That works very well. Alright so I'll give you some measurements now. Horizontal stabiliser is 31 centimetres and the, the elevator is 30 millimetres. Uh, it is at the thick distance here, it's uh, 11 centimetres, tapering down to 8 centimetres. Tail, height of the tail is 16 centimetres, 14 centimetres to the rear there, 
rudder is 50 millimeters tapering down to 40 millimeters at the top just blend them tape hinges as well you can see the boom just goes to the end of the vertical stabilizer part of it and the the rudder extends out the back tail boom extends 67 centimeters from the back of the fuselage fuselage length or the pod length is 35 centimeters to the back of the motor then the motor sticks out from that so the overall length from tip to tail is 112 centimeters fuselage the fuselage is made from six millimeter depron sides and top and three millimeter depron on the bottom and it's just a tube to fit your components in so that is uh, 45 millimeters width depth is 30 millimeters and as I said I would make that a little bit deeper a little bit wider uh, maybe just a little bit deeper like 35 maybe 35 40 millimeters would be better and I have just tapered that from here from this point here which is the front of the wing up to the back just so that it sort of encases the boom there just for a bit of the aerodynamics down to 20 millimeters by 25 millimeters this line along here is flat and the bottom is flat there and it just tapers up to the boom there the Kevlar line comes into the servo arm wraps around a few times and then just gets tightened up in the servo arm screw in the middle there it makes it easy to adjust the length of that and at the other end I've just made up a little wire hook there to hook into the control horn and I told you the wing measurements but I'll go through that again 1400 millimeters 140 millimeters and the thickness is about 14 millimeters and on the wing I just have a couple of bits of ID card plastic there to stop the rubber bands biting into the delicate foam Underneath I just have some lightweight black stripes on there made from tape. Uh, it doesn't affect the lateral balance at all. So that's about it. If you have any other questions, leave them in the description. I'm happy to answer them. I think this is really one of the best planes that I've ever, ever built. It just works so well as a super lightweight and sensitive thermal glider. I've left the wing tip square because it's, uh, it's kind of very difficult to make a nicely sort of finished off round more likely just to ruin performance than, than uh, improve it. The airfoil shape looks wonderful on the wingtip, but in this center section here, it's actually sort of kinked a bit, so it's a bit, it's a bit um, flat section and flat section. So I think maybe I'd put a wider former in there, maybe 30 millimeter or 40 millimeter former, or maybe two 20 millimeter formers with the spar glued in the middle. Uh, that hopefully would give a nice uh, smoother airfoil but seems to work well anyway. So go out and build yourself one, it's a ripper. Thanks for watching.